Mute yourself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, it is on my heart to pray mm -hmm. this morning, and um, I want to touch base on consistency real quick. Uh, God has really been moving on me about being consistent. Mm -hmm. It's not only consistency with your time. A lot of us give our time, but we also need to give our money and give our support. And I'm not saying that because anybody told me to. I'm saying that because God has really been pressing on me about being consistent. And he said that if I am consistent, he will unlock whatever hold is on my finances. Because right now, you know, I kept saying, Lord, I don't have a lot of wiggle room. My bills are to the max. I'm the only parent. I don't get child support. I'm the only uh, breadwinner in this family. And I have three kids that I'm supporting. So, you know, I kept saying this, but then God had spoke to me this week and he said, if you would just trust me mm -hmm. and just give what you can give. Mm -hmm. And I, if you're consistent, I will unlock whatever is holding back your finances. Mm -hmm. So I want to speak on that. I want to speak on being consistent. Give your time. That's great. But also give of your finances because without your jobs, you would have none. And God has blessed us with these jobs, these sources of income. And he has moved in our lives in such a manner that our provisions, he makes provisions for our needs. They're always met. I don't, I can't go back and say one time a need wasn't met. So that's what I want to start off with. But I'm going to move on into the prayer. So, Father God, I just thank you this morning. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory, Father God. I'm going to be consistent in prayer. I'm going to be consistent in giving. I'm going to be consistent in searching out who you are in my life, Father God. I'm going to be consistent in walking the path that you have placed before me. I'm going to be consistent with my children, Father God. And I thank you. If I start to stray or if I get off course, Father God, I would like you to remind me swiftly to get back on course, Father God. And I thank you this morning, Father God, because you gave me legs that are, are working. You gave me arms that are working. You gave me eyes that are working, Father God. Ability to be an able body, Father God. Father God, I thank you, Father God, because you gave me the heart that beats for my life and for my children's lives and especially beats for you, Father God. Without you, I am nothing, Father God. And I just thank you right now, Father God, because you always cover me. Even when I'm in disobedience, Father God, you cover me. Even when I don't listen, Father God, you cover me. And you cover my children, Father God. You have let nothing go by the wayside. You have never forgotten me or forsaken me, Father God. And I just lift you up right now in the name of yes. Yahweh, Father God. And I yes. thank you, Father God, for always having my back, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for making me a, a, a child of God that is hungry for the word, hungry to know the knowledge and secrets of you, Lord, hungry to live this life according to what your word says so that I can show my children something different, Father God. Society wants to show them one thing, but I want to show them you. I have a passion to show them you, Father God, and I want to walk it out in, in excellence, Father God. And I thank you for making me hungry for you in that way, Father God, where I want to seek your face. I want to learn as much as I can, Father God, and I pray over all all the mystics, Father God, that you unlock their passions and their hunger, Father God, so that they can also hunger and thirst for you on another level, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for giving us the ability to be in this space and time with the prophet and with all of our mystics family. I thank you for giving us the support and the love and encouragement and motivation from one another, Father God, because we are not going to get it from the world, Lord God. We may want to get these things from the world, but they're not for us. They're for us to be in the vein of you, Lord God. Yes. And I just give you praise, honor, and glory, Father God, because you are working mightily on each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. I've seen so much change on the platform. I've seen so many lives impacted in such a beautiful way. And I give you thanks and glory for that, Father God. And I thank you, Lord God, for each and every single person in the mystic family, especially prophet John, 
He pours into us so much, Father God, and I just ask that you cover him, Father God, and bless him abundantly and more than he can ever have to share with any entity, any en not entity, any um organization that he's so abundant that he has so much to give, not just his word, but his finances, his love, his attention. Father God, I just ask that you continue to increase that and continue to show him in the path that he needs to walk out for you, Lord God, because without him, a lot of us would not have the revelated knowledge. You have given it to him and he has done right by giving it to us. So I thank you for that, Father God. I thank you for his obedience because obedience is far better than sacrifice, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, for his children who are obedient and who are hungry. And I thank you, Father God, for the light that you put inside of all of them and that the impact that they have on each and every one of us. And I thank you for each and every mystic and their journey, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, for the prayers that are answered and the prayers that are not answered. I thank you for all the blessings seen and unseen, Father God. And I give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory forever and ever in Yahweh's mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. you. Amen. Let's just open our mics, everybody, and just praise God with that and agree with that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And it's so, and it can't be otherwise. That is so true. Consistency is very important. What did Paul say? You did run well, but who hindered you? Many times we start off con with consistency, but we allow circumstances and people and things to <clears throat> to hinder us. We need to be consistent in the things that we do. And as she mentioned about finances, if you need a breakthrough in finances, is it is very simple. Give, give. It is very simple. It is hard to do many times because we're trusting in what we have or what we don't have. But it is the universal law that whatsoever a man sow it, that shall he also reap. So if you're needing resources, finances, an increase, just give. I remember a long time ago, uh, this uh, one uh, a minister said, I was in this meeting, and he says, what you, if what you have is, does not meet your need, it must be your seed. And I says, ooh, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've emptied my wallets and bank accounts and done things and given away cars and all kinds of things, you know, uh, just, you know, because I know, I know that it works and it is very powerful, you know, uh, uh, when we do that consistently, you're preparing yourself for a harvest. You, that's the only way you're preparing yourself for a harvest. Amen. Matter of fact, we are entering into harvest season. We're entering into harvest season. I don't see any other hands up, so I'm gonna, gonna just kind of segue right into this little message, and then we're gonna get back to praying and ministering and uh, whatever the Spirit is doing uh, here today. But um, we're entering into harvest season uh, right now. We're in the month Elul. Elul on the uh, biblical calendar is the sixth month of the year. It is the month of preparation. It is when the sun is in Virgo. So we entered Elul uh, just about four days ago. And the name Elul, it means nothingness. It means good for nothing. And it basically shows the state of mankind, humanity created on the sixth day, uh, falling short of the seventh day, which represents perfection. And it shows that without the Christ, without Yeshua, without con your connection to the Most High God, 
you're good for nothing. Your life is good for nothing that you can have the, uh, the Rolls Royces, Mercedes Benz, you can have 15 bedroom mansions, you can have $100 billion in your account, you can be the most celebrated, most talked about person on the planet. But if you're not connected to the most high God, your life is good for nothing. You don't have that shalom that Prophet Sharon was speaking about. You don't have that inner peace uh, that, that she was speaking of. And uh, that's why Solomon said vanity of vanity. All is vanity and vexation of the spirit. He's talking about a life without the most high God, that it is a life of emptiness and vanity, although you can have everything. Now, this was coming from the mouth of a man that had everything. This was coming from the king, King Solomon, the richest king that uh, existed and uh, had everything. Matter of fact, the guy had 700 wives and 300 concubines, Lord Jesus. And uh, people came from all over the world just to see the wealth and the riches that he had and to hear of his wisdom and knowledge. And he came to a space in the book of what was that? I believe it was Ecclesiastes. Yes, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, which means the preacher, you know, and uh, where he goes through this whole scenario of all of these things that he had kind of tried and experienced and stuff. And he found that it was all vanity and vexation of the spirit. It just eats away. It just drains your life. How many ever been around people like that? And, uh, you know, <laughs> and it, it just drains you. And you know that that relationship maybe should not be where it's at at the time because it's, it's draining you until that energy can become balanced or you are in situations uh, uh, where you know it's draining and vexing your spirit, right? Uh, lifestyles and things like that, right? And so that's what he was saying. He goes through 12 chapters of talking about that. And then in chapter 12, he says uh, to us young folks, to us young folks, he says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, when the evil days come not near and nor the time draw not near where you should say, I have no pleasure in them. So he says, don't wait till you get older and you say, you know, uh, you're going to serve God. You're going to really give him your all in all. But right now you want to enjoy your youth. You know, that was one of my favorite scriptures that I would use when I was doing street evangelism when God first called me. I didn't call myself a preacher, nothing like that. I didn't want to ever do anything like that. I didn't want to ever be up in a church talking, but I could go out on the street and it was very effective because God had done something in my life. And I would use that scripture when I went out on the streets, when I went into schools, high schools, junior high schools, when I went on college campuses or wherever, because God just opened up doors. I didn't even seek this, but you know, he has a way of just, of just putting you out there. Right. And when I would go into prisons, jails or whatever, I would use that. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth for the young people like me that are listening, like, right. You know, remember God, you know, and don't wait till, you know, your life has gone by. And then you decide that, well, I think I might really dedicate my life to God now after you have used up this wonderful, beautiful body that God has given you and all of the energy that he has given you, but use it for him now. When I'm speaking of young people, I believe that you people know here on this platform that we are ageless, we are immortal, and we are eternal. And so you can be 80 years young if you can believe it up here because age is only a number. Somebody need to shout, it's only a number, it's only a number, it's only a number and, and whatever you give uh, energy to, to, if you give energy that that number is old, it must become that. But if you understand and understand that that number can vibrate at a specific frequency and that frequency will have an effect on your physical form and that your physical form must follow after what is within here, within your mind. If you have internalized it within your heart, you can stay whatever. You can be forever young. You know, you can because you realize it ain't that right, Billy, that you, you realize it and you understand who you are and that you are spirit. You are spirit. Now, I, I believe that that spirit does not age. Spirit just is.
is. And so as I move from my physical form and my soulic, my will and emotional form and tap into spirit, which is always is, and begin to hold that frequency and believe in that with my heart and let that become my profession, my confession out of my mouth. And so something has to happen to my physical body. Something has to happen because everything about you is listening. Every cell, every atom, every part of your being is listening and your body is listening to the to what is going on within here the internal conversations that you are having it is listening to to your your actions it is listening to the words that come out of your mouth and it will fulfill those desires i read you the scripture several weeks ago that god told moses to tell the children of israel that everything that you have said i'm gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like God said, tell them, tell them that everything that they have said, I've been listening, I heard them and everything that they have said, I'm going to do it. And you know what they have been saying? You brought us out here to die. We're going to die in the wilderness. You know, there is no food. There is no water. And there were not enough graves in Israel to, I mean, in, in Egypt. So you brought us out here to die. And we're going to die. And God says, I heard you. I heard you. And what you said and kept on saying, that must become your reality because you're ordering it. Because the power of life and death is right here in your mouth. It is in your tongue. And guess what? <coughs> None of those that came out of Egypt enter into the promised land except for Yeshua and Caleb because they had a different spirit. Joshua and Caleb, they had a different spirit. They said, we are well able to overcome come we are well able to we can do it God said we can do it of course there's giants out there 30 feet tall of course there's grapes that they have genetically modified because they have the fallen angel technology and grapes one grape as big as your head and it takes two people to carry one cluster of grapes and the pomegranate as big as two people's heads and you know and they had all of the science going because they had to to fill up those people that were giants I mean they had cow when you read in the Bible when it says they're going to a land of milk and honey. I want to just uh, just bring you out from the confines, the limitations of what you have believed for it to be a little bit. I'm still on my subject here. I'm getting there. You know, I want to just expand your consciousness. When God said, I'm bringing you to a land that's flowing with milk and honey, you have to realize that you had the seven Canaanite nations that was there, which are the seven abominations uh, that, that the book of Proverbs speaks about. And the last one says that he that soweth discord among the brethren. So you had these seven Canaanite nations there, the seven Canaanite nations, it was not that God did not like Canaanite people. That was not the point. It was not that God was a racist or anything like that. But you know, the, the Canaanite people, they had a manipulated genetic. They had a genetics that was mixed in with the, with the they was hybrids mixed in with the fallen ones, with the angels, with those fallen angels. And so that's why there were giants over there. That's why there were scorpion people over there. That's why there were lions men over there that's why there were all kinds of people that had mixed up you know God's image and trying to destroy the image and that's why God says I want you to go in there and wipe them out it was not because they were of a different religion or a different race uh, but it was because of a plan to destroy the image of God in the earth to destroy the bloodline by mixing a plan that had happened from the very beginning and so God says uh, I want you to go in there and and I want you to clear it out because my son, Yeshua, is going to come and he's going to provide redemption for all mankind. But if you don't get rid of the hybrid, if you don't get rid of the mixture, my son won't, won't have a place to come through. I won't be able to save. And so that's why they did it. So they're out there and they said, we can't do it. You got the scorpion people over there. You got the Akrabbans. Look in your Bible. There were the Akrabbans. These were, you know, when they made the movie Scorpion King, it wasn't just some science fiction story stuff it was stuff that was really going on that's really stuff that was happening there the Akrabbans and those people that was there and stuff they had the Akrabbans they had the linemen they had all kinds of uh, mixtures of people that were there that they had to overcome and the 30 at least 30 feet tall giants that was there that's why the book of the prophet said that the Amorites they were tall as the cedar trees <laughs> 
And so I can uh, kind of like, you know, sympathize with these uh, Hebrew Israelites that were in uh, the wilderness there. And then they saw things like this, where they said that in our eyes, we are like grasshoppers to them and their eyes also. They can barely even see us. Right. And so I can understand that. But, you know, God will always have you to do things that seem impossible in the natural. God will always tell you to do things that in your natural natural thinking and your natural ability it is impossible it just cannot happen God will say go to the bank and go get a loan for this for this house this car this business but God I know my creditors is like 600 you know or 400 or whatever like that I know it ain't gonna work you know I know I don't qualify and all at once the Holy Ghost move in such a way because he know how to work with computers you know that right and so <laughs> he know how to switch things around and the favor of God and the favor of man will be upon you and this okay yes you want that yeah 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 we'll give it to you we'll give it to you you know God might say go to this go to this job here and 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 uh and uh, uh and uh what's that fill out an application and you know you don't even qualify for it you don't even have the education for it you don't have the letters behind your name for it but because God said it you know they will just look right over that and how you I can tell you that I have done that before I did that before on a word from God where God says go to this place here and God open up a space for me God is just I mean it's just it's God is like too much he is like too much he is too if you can just conceive if you can believe I, I told you how uh, many, many years ago several years ago when I lived in Seattle I bought a luxury home with just a thousand dollars down <laughs> No job, no income. And but God had said it. God, the, the God had said, it. I told you about me walking because I kind of like luxury things, right? You know, it's okay, it's okay. Somebody tell me it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, right? Right. You know, and God God told me, go go into this, into this uh BMW store. I don't have a job, job, I don't have no income. And, and he showed me this car, and I end up like they had to drive it off the floor for me because I wanted that one right there because I had set in it, and so they had to drive it off into the lot after I sit there and would not get up because God says that you leave with this car today. And so, you know, and so I'm talking about the I'm talking about the God that is supernatural, that can move in your situation, whether it is something natural, whether it is something physical that's going on within your body or whether it is something emotionally or mentally going on in your mind or relationship. And many times the Holy Ghost will have you to do things that, you know, you know that it's not going to work in the natural, that it just don't work it don't make any kind of sense. I could tell you story out the service. I've traveled around the world with no money preaching in various places. And God says, go here, go there, do this, do this. Some of you guys know the service. You've heard them before like that. And out of the blue, God will send an airplane. You know, God, you know, somebody would just charter me a plane, just, you know, just out of the, I'm talking about when God tells you to do something that seems crazy and everybody said, you know, that's not going to work. That can't not work. That can't. And God says, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I, I just need to open up somebody's mic here and I need somebody just to say, uh, do it, 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 Amen. If you got the faith, if you can do, if you can just as Nike say, just do it, you know, God will back you up. I'm talk, I, I you know, I, I, I'm going to have to control myself here because when I start talking about faith stuff and things like that, you know, I, I'm, I live by faith. I live, I've never been supported by an organization, got nothing to, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I kind of wish I had, but you know, I just don't fit. I can't fit in little boxes and then be told you can only say this or that. You can only go to these people because they're part of our organization when God might be telling me to go to somebody else, you know, I can't do that. And so uh, I can't compromise who I am, who I am, the I am that's within me, right? And so uh, so they they said there was those 10 spies that says, we can't do it. We can't do it. We can't do it. And you know the story. You know the story. So only Joshua and Caleb enter in. And at 85 years old, see, I'm still on my story, right? At 85 years old, you know, they said that, you know, I'm just as strong as I was 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my mountain! 
That's what Caleb said. He says, you know, I remember 40 years ago when everybody said that it couldn't happen and there was weeping and crying and a lot of death and we had to go around that mountain for, for 38 more years, 40 years and stuff. And he says, now that we're finally here, yes, and on the outside it may look like a it may look like I'm a little bit older. It may look like something is going on here. But he says on the inside, I need somebody, uh, somebody that's, uh, let me just uh, unmute you again. I need somebody that is maybe over, over 50 human years, uh, over 50 human years. Somebody need to say on the inside, 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 hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, 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 now I need, I need somebody that is, uh, that, that is under that under 50 some years but but you, you act like it and stuff <laughs> and say on the inside on the, on inside. the inside come on now <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah okay all right so you know he says you know i remember i remember that and he says i am as strong as i was then now give me my mountain you got to be bold you got to be bold you have to know what you want and who you are and you have to sometimes and put a demand on the anointed you have to get right in the devil's face and say give me my mountain give me my I don't care who's up in that mountain I don't care how big that giant come I remember when I was in school uh, elementary school you know we had this saying and stuff especially with, with those bullies and things you know because you have those bullies and stuff like that and they kind of like you know try to like uh, bully especially there was people like me skinny glasses and stuff like that and and uh, you know kind of like you know, I, you know, I was that kind of like uh, what they call a geeky like looking kid, right, you know. And so I remember I had to adopt this saying, the bigger they come, the harder they fall. The bigger they come, the harder they fall. <laughs> and so you have to have to believe that and have to know that and have to realize that you transcend the age and time and anything that the physical body may lie and say, because your physical body will lie to you all the time. Matter of fact, your emotional bodies will lie to you all the time and tell you all kinds of stuff that you know you have you lying in bed you in depression and everything and feeling that you go need to get some drugs some prozac some valium some i don't know whatever kind of stuff they have out there now you know just to just to get up or whatever but you have to as david uh said pull yourself up by your bootstrap and encourage yourself in the lord and realize hallelujah who you are who you are and so age is just a number age is whatever you you give it to be and he says remember now thy creator remember now not tomorrow not now your creator in the days of thy youth all you young people here i'm looking at all these beautiful young people here coming in various shades and various colors and various body sizes and all kinds of things all these beautiful young people some got hair some don't got hair some got their own teeth some don't got their own teeth you know all kinds of stuff you know some got weaves and some got you know whatever you know but all kinds of people People, white hair, black hair, brown hair, all skin colors and everything from all over. He says, remember now your creating days of your youth, you know, <laughs> amen. And so remember God, remember that you are youth, youthful, you are forever young, you are powerful, you are beautiful and get in front of the mirror every day and tell yourself that and stop letting your body and your mind lie to you and tell you otherwise. Don't accept that in the mighty name of Yeshua. So this is the month of Elul. Elul is the sixth month on the Hebrew calendar. It's spelled E-L-U-L, -L, Elul, Elul, and it means nothingness, good for nothing, nothingness, good for nothing, that a life apart from the Christ, the Most High, you can have all of the riches, all of the wonderful things that we thank God for those things. Yes, and it's good to have those things. I like those things too, right? You know, <laughs> but you know, you, you, they don't have to have you, amen, right? And so uh, you can have all of those things, but if you don't have the Christ, you know, if you don't have Christ, you have nothing. That's what this this month is a reminder of that's why the shofar is blown every uh every day of the week of this month let me see if i can find a shofar here somewhere you know oh oh that that, that, that that's what i'm talking about i i know some of y'all can probably hear it. you might have to turn it up turn it up turn it up yeah a shofar is blown every day of the week and it is a reminder. Why is is a reminder to return to 
God. Return to God. This is Elul 4. So for the next, what, 26 days, that shofar should be sounding within your spirit. Matter of fact, we used to do this. We need to get back to it. Y'all, some of y'all remember, we used to, on, on, the, on the Zoom platform, especially when we was doing it every day, my boys would blow the shofar like every day of Elul, you know, as and it was a spiritual reminder to return to God. It is a call to repentance. Repentance. But you might say, well, I've already repented. I've already come to God. A, you know, I, I repent every day, all throughout the day. I find I'm on the toilet and I'm thinking about stuff and I repent. Oh, God, forgive me. You know, forgive me. And things come back to my mind. Oh, God, forgive me. I, I just, it's just, I, I don't know. Maybe I have the gift of repentance. And it's not because I'm afraid of some hell or some angry God. It is just that it has become a part of my life. It has become a part of my life. And there are some people that do have a problem of saying I'm sorry or apologizing when they're wrong and they never apologize. I've met people like that I'm, I, and I, I just don't understand it. They know that they're wrong. They know that they've done something wrong, but they will tell you out flat. I'm not apologizing for nothing, you know. I mean, such arrogant, evil minded people they will get nowhere in life although it may appear as though they do but they will not and so we need to have the gift of repentance of being able to say i'm sorry even when it ain't your fault even when it ain't your fault i mean you got to have power you got to have maturity to to be able to do that and so all throughout the day i find myself because you know I, i'm kind of my the way my mind works and stuff I don't know. I guess I'm a maybe typical Scorpio. I, I, I remember things. I remember I can remember details of stuff like right. And so and I'm just walking through the house or driving I'm just, and something will just come into my mind. And I'm, oh, God, forgive me. I mean, stuff that I've repented of like for years and decades ago. And then I realized, OK, yeah, I've, I've already you know, that's already under the blood or whatever that thought or that action or whatever I said to someone or whatever, you know, and it doesn't have to be major or it can be major and stuff. But living in that state of mind where you're easy to just you're having your heart soft before God, you know, soft, tenderized before God, where is it's easy for you to, you know, uh, just uh, to, to repent. It is easy for you to um, say, I'm sorry. And, uh, and, and it's very powerful, you know, in relationships, it is very powerful for somebody to acquiesce, you know, <laughs> instead of having that stalemate, that standoff there, I'm not saying nothing, you know, saying I'm not, you know, somebody got to be the big person, somebody got to humble themselves at some point. And it's hard sometimes, especially when you know that you're right and you've been through this 2,600 times and stuff and people still don't get it, but it is empowering for you. It is not about the other person, it's about you, somebody need to shout it's about me it's about me and so the month of elul is about that is about repentance and repentance repentance not just saying it but really having the change of mind you know having a change of mindset okay i'm not gonna do things that way anymore i'm not gonna say things that way i'm not gonna you know uh, uh think that way anymore or at least i'm not gonna try to or if the thought comes to my mind i'm not gonna dwell on it right because you know we don't at this point we don't have much control of the thoughts that come to our mind or the things that are triggered within our consciousness right subconscious mind but we do have the control over if we are going to dwell on that right if we're going to meditate on that right okay we can choose to think or meditate on the things that are lovely just pure true and honest enough a good report things that are praiseworthy and the, and the god will keep you in that place of shalom that we were talking about or that place of peace because your mind is that is your thinkless in philippians you know how to think right you know how to thank as they would say you know you're thanking on the right things right and so uh that is just uh, wonderful that we can do that and also this repentance uh it, it, you know it means to return to the top like the pent pent house i'm going back to the top so as we learn to repent and to learn to be apologetic and to learn learn to just not just have to have it our way because this ain't burger king and uh, it, it doesn't just everything you know even though you may be right but it may not be correct you know <laughs> you may be correct or it may not be right i should say it that way you know and sometimes just for the sake of peace because some people they're they're, they're small-minded 
and they are where they are and we want them to kind of grow up and just to, but you know uh they, they that's right leslie but but sometimes they're not willing to they want to be a toys r us kid i'll never grow up in that in that state of mind right you know so they don't and so we have to uh do those things for the sake of others sometime and that's what this month is about is about repentance it's about returning to the top like the penthouse and so the more you live in that state of repentance sentence of, of like changing the mind, changing the mind, you go to a higher level of the floors until you get to the penthouse. At the penthouse, you see everything as it is. You have a panoramic view. You have an enlarged vision. Can somebody say uh, uh, clairvoyancy? Okay, yeah. And so all of this, it has to do with your spiritual abilities and stuff. If we are able to change our mind and live in that state of repentance and humility and stuff, you know, your ability to see becomes clear and clear. Your clairvoyancy, not only your clairvoyancy, clear voyant clear hearing i mean clear seeing voyance right that's a french word i know that many times i'm in christian circle oh that, that that's, a, that's an occult word yeah please jesus get a dictionary all right use your phone use your phone use your phone look up words right and so uh, clairvoyant and then there's clear audience that means clear hearing right and so in those higher spaces your ears are open you can hear what the lord is saying because it's not clogged with the ego and with pride and with hanging on to stuff from six minutes ago, six years ago, 60 years ago, right? And so now uh, things are becoming more clear. That's what clear means, clear. So I can see clear, I can hear clear, I can feel clear. And clairsentient, clairsentient it is called, that means that you can sense things and pick up things clearly. That is that intuition that is there. And so what am I saying? So the Christ that's within you, the power and the force that there becomes more, uh, uh, how can I say activated and everything grows within you more of the spiritual attributes begin to manifest because of the changing of the mind because of that and so Elul Elul was for that the sixth month for the six for the man created on the sixth day good for nothing until he's connected to the Christ consciousness within and I'm not talking about like in the religious sense but the Christ within God within and then now he is finally good for something because he is no longer uh, just led by his ego and doing whatever he wants to do but he is now surrendered and submissive to the most high God and uh, not my will but thy will be done not my will but thy will be done okay and so uh, uh, that's very powerful. Another reason uh, for Elul was a time of confession, a time of confession. Confession is powerful. It is so powerful. You know, I remember when we first started this uh, Rising Mystics about six years ago, some of the things that I would like confess and share, you know, people would like <laughs> and I would get little phone calls by people that were a little bit concerned. Prophet, do you think that you should be sharing that? Do you think I'm going? Uh, yeah, it feels good. <laughs> it feels good, you know, and stuff that although I may be called to uh, specific offices and and being gifted with uh, different, you know, gifts and abilities and have traveled all over the world. You know, I am, there's this part of me that is yet human, you know, and I am trying to let this humanness be swallowed up in the divine. And so now I just say, oh, you know, this, this, that, and the other, and like, and people go like, uh. <laughs> but you know, it feels so good when you can be transparent transparent now i'm not saying that you have to find the right space and place for that because in religion you know there there is really no 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 space for that they don't provide a platform for that because they will you know just they will dog you out they will condemn you they will you know act like that they're god's first cousin that they never have sinned in their life and they know that they're guilty of some of the same stuff you know <laughs> and uh and but they'll act like it you know how to put on that that, that Christian look and that, that Christian face and that, you know, all the Christian jargon and all of that craziness, Pharisee, Pharisee or Sadducee. 
<laughs> but uh, so you have to find a, a, the, the, the right space and confession is good. And sometimes it is just, if you can't find that person, it's just writing things down. But if you, if you have wronged someone and you need to confess, you need to do things, it is very important. You send an email, send a letter, or make a phone call, do a text or talk to someone. And do that. it is very important because see, there are set times scripture speaks about set times that god has created and this is a set time what do you mean that the way the universe and everything is set up the way god said that's why he told them and ezekiel what was that not ezekiel but exodus 12 i believe it was he says this is the beginning of the months for you and so god began to set up this calendar although the calendar was already kind of like in place but he was reiterating that and that he wanted them to uh, follow and stuff because it was going to be very important you know so that they could understand the festivals of yahweh the festivals of god and the set times that he wanted to bring them together for certain things because uh, there is a time and a season for everything that's why he said in psalms 102 verse uh, uh 12 it says but you O yahweh shall endure forever and your remembrance unto all generations you shall arise huh you shall arise you're going to come up to my rescue and have mercy upon zion i am zion number somebody need to say i'm zion right and upon zion uh, for the time to favor her see there are times of favor there are times of favor the time to favor her yes the set time is come now the six month uh just as god established it many years ago and he said that it's forever was a preparation time for the seventh month which is tishri the seventh month on the hebrew calendar that's where the last three festivals of god are the most powerful that are being fulfilled in our time and if you've been around here you know uh, that we have fulfilled the first three festivals the first four festivals they have been fulfilled in yeshua yeshua our passover which was a hard this festival right okay in the first month of the year and then Yeshua our uh, um, what's it uh, unleavened bread okay the feast of unleavened bread he was the unleavened bread right and uh, Yeshua our first fruit he was the resurrection and the life right and then about what 40 50 days 40 50, uh, 50 days later uh, it was Pentecost he came down return on the day of Pentecost right so those are the first uh, uh, four festivals that God gave them in Leviticus 23 that he says this is forever because this is connected to my clock so you can know what time it is, sons and daughters of Issachar, right? All right. And then, but he, there was a space between those spring feasts and those fall festivals, right? Because God likes to party. That's why they were called festivals and feasts, right? And so, um, and so now we're moving into the fall festivals, which is three uh, festivals, which is trumpets, Day of Atonement and Sukkot. Okay, Trumpets is also called Rosh Hashanah. New Year, we will be talking about that. We're coming to the year 5785. Okay, and then uh, Yom uh, uh, Day of Atonement, uh, which is uh, Yom Kippur, and then uh, Sukkot or, or Tabernacles. So these were set times. Now, Elul, the sixth month, was placed there to show us this is preparing. We are preparing because we are rehearsing i need everybody that can i need you to just uh, let me open up your mics here uh let me click that thing i need everybody to say it's a rehearsal it's a rehearsal it's we a are rehearsing it's a rehearsal it's a rehearsal it's a rehearsal yes it is a rehearsal yes it is and we are rehearsing we are rehearsing <laughs> just as ancient israel had done for 1500 years before yeshua came they had to rehearse by by slaughtering a lamb right they had to rehearse by pulling up this barley and waving it represented that he would be resurrected they had to rehearse by waving two loaves of bread when the sun was in gemini the twins you know signifying uh pentecost right those were all rehearsals then the reality came then the reality came so from then to now we are rehearsing 
trumpets. That's why you hear the, the, the shofar being blown because we're getting ready for the trumpet to sound, the trumpet to sound, literally, right? It's going to be crazy. It is already sounding within us, but, and then we're moving into Yom uh, Kippur, which, is, which means the day. I'm not going to deal with the feast. And then uh, uh, ultimately uh, tabernacles, which represent what many call the millennial reign. So all of that is there, and we are here to rehearse because once enough energy has been built up it can manifest can you hear what i'm saying once enough energy has been built up it has to manifest just like for 1500 years from the time of moshe all the way down to uh john the baptist and uh, the annunciation of messiah coming enough energy had been built up so messiah had to come it was a set time plus daniel had peered through the realms of spirit, through the portals of time and using astrology. And he was able to tell when Messiah was going to come. It's in the book of Daniel, right? That's why the, the Magi, the astrologists knew that's what they was looking for because he had left a clue. Woo, it is powerful. It is powerful and it is wonderful. So here we are now. So we are rehearsing. So the six month Elu, we are we are hearing the, the shofar sound within us, the word of God sound within us, and it is calling us to come closer. Draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh to you. It is preparing us for the seventh month. Seven is a number that represents maturity, completion, perfection, all of that, right? And no, I'm not saying that Yeshua is coming next month. No, I mean, he's not. <laughs> I mean, he's here and he's continually coming, but that coming, no, that is not. But, you know, almost every year you will find that uh, eschatology students will, will say that he is coming. They have books and books and books that they've made millions off of saying that he was coming. And he didn't come because it wasn't the set time. It wasn't the fullness of time. And plus, they got the whole people group wrong. You know, they they, they they looking over in Palestine, which was renamed Israel. And they're saying that those folks over there are the ones. And so therefore, it's been fulfilled. So he has to come wrong. That is great deception. <laughs> and they're pending everything on a fake people, a people that hijacked a religion and not only hijacked a religion, but hijacked a race of people. Right. And, uh, you know, that are very. Uh, psychopathic, you know, for it's talking about the leaders and uh, ones that are in control there. And of course, some of the other people, you see how they act right <laughs> now. But uh, so, uh, so no, 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 Yeshua is not coming next month, next year or anything like that. So relax, peace. All right. And so, uh, but, uh, but so, yeah, this is preparing us for the event. So we, heard, we rehearse by uh, acknowledging these festivals that Yeshua told us to acknowledge and by disconnecting ourselves from uh, these pagan holidays, these pagan holidays. We are cleaning ourselves up. We're getting rid of the Babylon and, and taking off the Babylonian gar garments and things. The closer you draw to him, the more you're going to want only him and you're going to like let go of all the other stuff. Because, you know, clean water and filthy water can't come out of the same fountain, can it? Right. OK. And so uh, it might for a little while when you turn it on. But then that that clean water is going to flush it all out. So we need we need to have a we need to have a flush. We need to have a, a Holy Ghost enema sometime. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> to get all the crap flushed out of us so that we can just manifest, you know, the truth of God. And, and part of that is, as I was saying, is learning to be transparent with ourselves and not deceiving ourselves, not fooling ourselves. And But as I say, religion hasn't provided a space for that because they condemn, they, they you know, okay, I'm struggling with this, with this uh, addiction here, so they will condemn you there, you know. I'm struggling with alcoholism, drugs, okay, I'm struggling with uh, sex, um, lesbianism, homosexuality, and so everybody now, you know, you, they, you got you got labeled there and everything, and they're going to eventually like get you out of there, whatever. Although the choir may be filled with them <laughs> and hiding underneath those robes and everything, right? But to save face and all of those things, and so we so we are coming to a space, and and the Most High is bringing the church, as it were, the, the ecclesia, to a place of exposure. I lose use that word loosely. And because uh, it is not exposed like in the way that a lot of these people like to go around and just, oh, I'm exposing this, I'm exposing that, these dumb people, you know, that are seeking to do 
harm to people. But when I speak of uh, uh, exposure, I'm speaking of how uh, the Holy Spirit does it. Like, and whenever the Holy Spirit uncovers something, exposes something, he gives people a way out. He gives people a way out. It is not just condemn. Okay, you did this, what, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, so now, you know, burn in hell. You know, you're the most evilest person ever, you know. Or you did this 30 minutes ago or whatever, you know, and maybe you have repented. It's not like, you know, with, with the most high. Burn in hell or whatever like that. But see, those people that like to expose, that's the mentality that they have. But the, the exposure that the most high does and stuff, you know, he uncovers so that we can see, so that we can change the things that need to be changed so that we can come back into relationship alignment with him and just pick right back up where we left off. Now, modern day religion does just the opposite. You get out of you get out of ministry. You can never go into a pool pit again. You can never do this or never do that and stuff. You know, it is is crazy. It is so far from what uh, even New Testament teaches and stuff. Uh, how do you know this? You got a guy that that denies Jesus t three times, not one time, but three times. And this is the guy that walked with him, talked with him, ate with him, slept with him, and knew him very, very close. And he denies him that he knows him and all of that. And then, you know, he becomes the leader of the church. What? You know, oh, how does that happen? Because he repented. He had a change of mind. And Peter yet had some problems, as I pointed out just Oh, several days ago, you know, he had a problem with race. You know, he didn't like these Gentile people that were had occupied them and oppressed them for like years and years and years. And but yet he was anointed of God, and and so uh, and so God dealt with that. God exposed it to him in Acts chapter wasn't it ten where he says, "Callest thou not come or unclean that which I have cleansed?" Right? Okay. And so we are finding this. I don't know why I'm getting off on this, but I'm just trying to show you that when God exposes, when God what we uh, uh, uncovers things it is so that we can make the changes in our life and not go and never do ministry again or never do uh the things that the spirit it doesn't disqualify us the gifts and the callings are without repentance amen hallelujah it doesn't matter how, what a person has done if they are willing to repent change and if they need to be uh, you know, if something needs to happen with the criminal justice system and stuff, you know, what Paul was in jail, he was preaching. <laughs> Matter of fact, he was writing letters and all kinds of things, right? Doing, and so my point is that Elu is about really being true with ourselves. Uh, it says if we confess and forsake our sins, he is uh, just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I believe James 5 and I think 14 say something similar about like, you know, confessing our sins and then uh, uh, the prayer of faith will save us and then I believe it goes on to say that the fervent effectual prayer of the righteous avails much, right? Okay, so uh, so it is powerful. This month is a very powerful month of just coming before God and saying, okay, God, here I am with all of my mess and everything like, right, you know, and, uh, you know, I haven't done things exactly the way I should, which I don't believe that there is any of us have, and that's no condemnation because we're all growing and learning and stuff, but some of us maybe have been a little bit more loose in our like spirituality uh, than we should then we know better we know better we know better and god is saying tighten it up tighten it up you know tighten it up you can't be straddle the fence you can't be over here and over there halfway in and halfway you got to be all the way or no way no way all right and so i believe that's what uh well i know that's what the month is about and i think that is basically my message one of them at least and so uh the the sun is in virgo sun is in virgo another reason why elul is in uh, comes at this time because the sun is in virgo on the tropical uh, zodiac right and virgo represents uh cleanliness ah that's the virgin, you know, she's cleaning things up. It represents discrimination, like, you know, analyzing. It represents, you know, putting things in order, getting your life in order, setting your house in order, getting rid of the old and bringing in, you know, the, the fresh and the new, preparing yourself. And can I go a little bit deeper with that? Because uh, uh, in, on the larger scale, Virgo, uh, being there in the uh, the sixth month, preparing for the uh, the seventh month, it represents you and I. 
that virgin consciousness, the bride of Christ, right? And that bride of Christ is waiting for a trumpet to sound as the book of Matthew speaks about at midnight, right? And uh, the virgins were awakened, but there were like five of those virgins. They were virgins, but they weren't wise. They, those were the ignorant run, you know, it's not ignorant like, but you have to be like down south, like, you know, where some of my folks come from, my, my grandmother, my uncles, and was say, ignorant, ignorant, don't be ignorant, John. All right, <laughs> don't be ignorant, but it's not ignorant, it's ignorant, you know, but <laughs> don't be ignorant. And so, and so the Holy Ghost is saying, don't be ignorant, don't be like those virgins. They were virgins, they were pure, but they didn't have the extra oil. They didn't have the oil of enlightenment and Holy Spirit and revelation knowledge. And so at midnight, there was a cry made, <laughs> there was a shofar being blown, you know, and so they heard it, and but they couldn't find their way in the darkness because they had discarded revelation knowledge and they wanted to stay within the four spiritual laws of modern day Christianity where okay well you get saved you get baptized in the name of the Lord and you you know you be just a good you know Christian or whatever like that and that's all and you just come here every Sunday or every Wednesday or whatever and we just redo the same thing over and over and you never grow beyond that you hear the same thing all the time right and so, but there were the wise ones that had the extra oil, that had revelation, knowledge, illumination, understanding, and was able to overstand. So at midnight, a dark season, when the cry was made and the shofar was blown, they could find their way. They could see their way because they had the spiritual insight. Their lamps had the oil in it. Didn't the book say in Matthew 6 that the lamp of the body is the eye, the pineal gland? So the third eye was open. Oh, uh oh, uh oh! Look at that! Look at it! How do you how do you do that? I, I'm, I've been looking at like uh, uh, Leslie. If what was that you were doing, Leslie? How how were you just doing that with your eye? Yeah, you did something else though. What did what did you do? You did something like this or something. I don't know. What did you do with your eye just now? <laughs> okay, she don't remember. Okay, she's she's yeah. There there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Right. You you see a lot of people doing that online and stuff, and then Christians get freaked out. <gasps> Illuminati, 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 and stuff like that, you know, they get, you know, freaked out and stuff. People said that about me years ago when I was teaching on this stuff um, quite some time ago, right? And they don't understand that uh, the, the real Illuminati uh, are actually the body of Christ that's coming forth in this hour that's filled with the illumination of his spirit. And our light will basically overcome their partial light okay and so because our eye is open so he says the lamp of the body is the eye and if your eye be single your whole body will be filled with light so the five wise virgins they had their third eye open the lamp of the body they had the extra oil okay the anointing i don't want to get into all the metaphysical stuff there so they could go in but the other ones they could not go in they were virgins they believed they were baptized you know probably talking tongues too and all that but you know they they couldn't go in and so uh so this month is the month for preparation is the month preparing you for tijri okay it's the seventh month uh which is the month that represents coming into a uh, consummated relationship with him that's what we are rehearsing and acting out what shall be it means many other things okay i'm gonna just uh, kind of um move from that so that's another reason why it is in the, the month of virgo the virgin and i told you uh over the i think it was last week or so in the constellation of virgo there is coma that's the first sub constellation and that's the woman with child so the virgin bethula is pronounced in hebrew has given birth to a child isn't that a miracle and God prophesied that back in Isaiah about 700 years or so before Yeshua came that you know when uh the most high asked uh uh, Isaiah for he says I, I want to give you a sign go ahead and ask for a sign you know ask it someone in the heavens in the deep or whatever he said no 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 God this, I don't have to ask because I'm going to give it to you anyway I'm going to give it to you and how many like that I mean I just really like like God you really love God that he'll give it to you anyway when you don't even ask for stuff he'll give you stuff that you don't even ask for like you know God I know you're good I know you've done this you've done that and I don't even need to ask for that because I'm going to give it to you anyway because I love you because you're my son you're my daughter I'm going to give it to you anyway and some of y'all know that you got stuff 
that you didn't pray for, something that you may have felt that you weren't even worthy of, but it came to you anyway, right? Because uh, he loves you. So God said, I'm going to give it to you anyway. And so he gave him this sign of this Bethulah, this virgin that was going to bring forth a son. His name was going to be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, all of that, right? And so that's what the constellation of Virgo represents. I, some of you that's been around here know I've taught on that in the past in astrotheology, the, the three sub-constellations. So the first constellation is coma, and it represents that uh, the desire. That's what coma means. It means the desire of all nations. So this month, Elu, is about you producing the desire of all nations. It's about you connecting with the desire of all nations. I believe it was Haggai that spoke about the desire of all nations would come, and that is Yeshua, that is the Christ consciousness manifesting out of you. The second sub-constellation is called Centaurus. Centaurus is a centaur, half human, half horse. And he has this long spear, and he has, he has killed this wolf. Mm, mm, mm. I want to get into that, but I don't want to go too far into that because I don't, yeah, that'll be another message. But just, you know, just, just use your mind for a minute. And matter of fact, you can even look it, look it up, uh, look it up. I don't have time to, to pull it up here. Just uh, C-E-N-T-A-U-R-U-S, Centaurus constellation. Look at it and you'll see this half man, half horse, and that he has this, this spear and he has this wolf. And the name of that constellation is called Lepus, the wolf. Uh, there that's been sacrificed that see your wolf nature must be sacrificed <laughs> that wolf part of you must be sacrificed see because we've been a sheep in wolf clothing <laughs> and sometimes we're a sheep in wolf clothing okay uh, did you hear that okay you got to think about that right but that wolf nature it has to be sacrificed the leper uh, lepus is called l-e-p-u-s that's a constellation must be sacrificed and it's, and it's sacrificed by the centaur the half human half horse horse representing power and uh, humanity there that's represent the two natures of christ right that's you that's your two natures okay you must do it use that lance use the sword of the spirit to sacrifice that wolf that's in you that wants to devour your spirituality that wants to deceive that's cunning crafty and all that that nature that lower nature that's within us that seeks to like prowl around right creeping sometime right okay no 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 not 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 Sagittarius that's a different one okay Sagittarius but but Centaurus Centaurus Sagittarius is uh is uh, is the constellation that's the zodiac constellation, uh, not a sub constellation. But thank you. That's that's pretty good. But uh, 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 somebody, let me just find it for you. This is a class. I, I, you guys don't mind me, maybe just just to show you so that you can uh, understand this uh, for a second, please. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. Centaurus. Let me see here. Mm hmm. I'm gonna just show you here. Ah, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll go here. I'll just screen share with you this. This is what the constellation looks like. You see that? Do you see that? Ah, that is in that it is in the Virgo sector. He's in the Virgo sector, is as Centaurus. And you see this, he has this lance, he has this 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 spear here, and he has uh kill the flesh. He has killed lepers here. And notice underneath him, oh what? There's a Southern Cross. Crooks, Crooks is right there in the heavens before, you know, before Yeshua was ever. Let me try to make it bigger here. I don't know what it's going to bring me to. Okay, yeah, there it goes here. Okay, look at that. Look at that. Okay, here's the Hydra. There's a devil over there trying to do something, but you know, he has no power there. Okay, and so look, here, here's Lupus here. Here's the Centaurus here. All of this is in the uh, Virgo sector here. It comes after the desire of nation comes, you know, after the Christ, you begin to realize that you have this dual nature. You are half human, you're part human, and you are divine. And you've been given the sword of the spirit, and that sword of the spirit Number one is not for fighting principalities and things out there, but it's stuff that's within you. It's for pulling down things within you. And once we pull down those things within us, it is easy to pull them down out there. Okay, so now he has a uh, sacrifice, and this represents the sacrifice, foreshadowing that Yeshua would become the sacrifice of all nations. It is, it is uh, multi layered here, representing Yeshua would take on the sins of the world and that he would become the, the sacrifice, right? And then, because you see the cross, your crooks, that is in the heavens. And this is what is rising, 
right now. Okay, I don't want to go further than that because we'll get off from where we're going. You see that? Okay, so that is Centaurus, and uh, that is uh, taking place there. And the moon is in Scorpio right now, and so this is the fourth day of Elu. And uh, for those of you that want to kind of like follow along with what a lot of conscious-minded people are doing that 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 follow the heavens and stuff, uh, study the book of Judges during this month study the book of Judges, it, and is, this book is read during uh, the month Elul, okay, there's 13 judges there, some of you, if you will check it out, it will say 12 judges, don't believe that, it's 13, I've counted them multiple times, and Samson is the 13th judge, has to be 13 because there was 13 tribes okay there was 12 tribes right and then but there was 13 there was a tribe of levi that was there and well you find it well let me say it another way joseph had two sons ephraim and manansa okay and they became separate tribes and then you find that uh jacob israel how many kids did he have okay some will say 12 sons but you forgot about he had a daughter he had dinah he so he had 13 kids and so they had to represent the zodiacal clock that's out there so you have 13 signs and, and on my website atam.org if you want to find more about the 13th sign and all of that you can find it there i taught on that many many years ago taught on it before it became uh popular matter of fact i even prophesied it you know that that they were going to discover that there was a 13th zodiac because i had already seen it this was what 17 years ago <laughs> and so and it made headline news there's a 13th sign you know and then people start wondering does that mean i'm still a sagittarius does that mean i'm still this yeah you're still whatever you are you are right you just have to understand it and so jacob had uh, uh 13 kids 12 sons and one girl okay dinah right and so the book of judges uh is showing that but it's hidden in there how many judges were there 13 12 men and one woman who's the one woman deborah Okay, now it, it all connects together. How many months are there on the lunar calendar? 13. So there had to be 13, you know, signs out there. I don't want to go there. I'm not going to go there because we'll get into other things here. I'm only here to tell you this morning that this is the month Elu, and it means nothingness, emptiness, and that without the Christ consciousness that, you know, you don't have anything. So you must stay connected to spirit. You must take, stay connected to spirit within. And it is good and it is important if you stay consistently connected with a group, with a with people of like mind, because uh, you are helping to build yourself up. You are helping to strengthen that which you have received. Amen. And so that is very powerful. Amen. So we thank God for that. One last thing before I get out of the way in case somebody else has something to say. Uh, I remember uh, when uh, uh, Sister Erica started to pray, she had this. Uh, can you just can you use that uh, uh, image that you had up there before, Erica, please? I believe it was sunflowers. And when I saw the sunflowers, uh, how many look? I want to just show you this sunflowers here and this sunflowers here because it's very powerful here and because they follow the sun. And what the Lord is saying to you today is to be a sunflower, be a sunflower follow the sun follow the son of righteousness he is a sun and shield unto you and they move right with the sun all around i remember many years ago traveling through ukraine and russia and stuff i was just totally amazed by fields of these uh sunflowers and stuff and on the train and seeing them and watching them you know being places and watching them just move and so the lord is saying to you and i to be like the sunflower stay focused on the sun there are many things that will seek to distract you and to pull you away but if you stay focused on the sun you'll get to where you're going stay focused on him turn your eyes up on Yeshua look full into his wonderful face the scripture says looking unto Yeshua who is the author and the finisher of our faith now the sunflower also represents long life longevity that's one of the sim that's what it represents so if you stay focused on him if you're looking at him you will have a long life longevity right because he is life the scripture says that that at his right hand there is life and joy evermore so we are focusing on him and because we we want long life. We want to live 
long. Anybody want to live long? I don't, you know, you know, and of course, you know, we have various, we have different contracts that we're here for that time. But me, I've, I've redone my contract several times because several times I was supposed to have been gone, you know, and uh, I yet knew that there was yet much more work that I could do and that I wanted to do. So I had to renegotiate my contract. And so it was extended. I I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. And some of you did the same thing, but you didn't realize that's what you were doing when you were at death's door and you begin to pray and cry out to God or something was happening, somebody was about to take your life and then God just intervened just in time, right? Whether it was a car, a bullet or knife or whatever, you know, he intervened or the uh, sickness or whatever, right? And so it represents long life and uh, it represents happiness, happiness, happiness. So we were talking about all of these things here. So be like the sunflower, be filled with happiness. Look at that face, look at that face, look at that face, it is radiating. So allow your face, the Lord has said, allow your face to radiate with his light. The more that you look at him, the more that you focus on him, where he becomes your focus, look into Yeshua, who is the author and the finisher of your faith, the more you're going to radiate with his light. Now, there's so many things out there. There's so much information because we're in the age of information. Daniel prophesied that uh, that knowledge or technology would increase and many would run here, here and there to and fro and all of that. So, but in your research, in your uh, 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 development of knowledge and learning and stuff, it got, you've got to be focused on the sun. Otherwise, you're going to get distracted and you're going to have all of this information, which may be good, but not able to put it into practice, you know, because, see, what we're doing here, uh, as the scripture says, that uh, that our words are not uh, with, you know, uh, man's wisdom, but it's with demonstration of the spirit and with power demonstration of the spirit with power right so you got to have not only the word but you got to have the spirit hallelujah because it is the spirit that brings the word alive it could be a wonderful revelation it could be just oh my god some of the deepest stuff you know but if you don't have the spirit of that in other words you're not living that that's that's not a part of your life or something that you just maybe read or heard or something like that you know what you just spouting out that it's very little power in that. But when you become that and when you're living that and when that when that water of that word has been turned to wine, oh, my God, it's going to get people drunk. They're going to they're going to be able to experience it. There is an impartation take taking place and they're going to have encounters. Hallelujah. And so that's what it, it represents. It also represents a, a new path. It represents strength. And all of that. And that's what the Lord is saying to you today. Some of you are seeking for a new path. And this is what I heard just when uh, I wrote it down when uh, she was praying, when Erica was praying and I saw that. And so God is here to give you that new path to show you the way that you should go. He's here to give you strength because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And but you got to keep your eyes focused on him. Keep your eyes focused on him and not on the many things that would seek to distract you and pull you away that would disguise itself as powers and knowledge and other things. OK. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe that? Do you believe that today? I think that's all I am going to say on that. And I'm going to just uh, let you open your mics for a minute and let's just worship for a minute. If you receive that word and see where else we need to go. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mics. Those of you that can. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. We are the sunflowers of God. Yes. The sunflowers of God. Yes. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Yes. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us, Lord, that we can do the work, Lord, because you're doing it through us, Lord, to be strong, Lord, as we crucify these wolves, Lord, so that we can go higher in you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you for revelation and confirmation, Lord, during this oh, month, thank Lord. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, 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 thank you for letting us know that we are on the right path, Lord. Your path, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. 
Oh, and the yeah. clarification. Yeah, 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 Thank yeah. you for your Glory. word. Oh, so we want to be like the, the five. Praise. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord God. It is so. It is so. Amen. To those of you that fear my name or reverence my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing. Healing. Hallelujah. Healing. That's Malachi 4.2. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. I see. Uh, I thought I saw. Yeah. Prophet Dorothy. Pastor Prophet Dorothy is in the house. And I don't know if someone have a word for anyone. You can um, release that word pretty soon here. We're going to be making an announcement about some meetings coming up in October. That's going to be powerful. OK, it's going to be powerful. Hallelujah. Uh, you all got the uh, uh, schedule for September, I believe. And uh, we're moving into like each Monday night, we're having various prophets coming and that's going to be speaking, you know, and uh, it's going to be very powerful. And so October, we're going to do some things on a Sunday and uh, I'm not going to get into it too much right now, but it's coming. I just want to just like pique your interest, you know, uh, for about an hour, hour and a half on Sundays and stuff. Those are for the second and third Sunday. I'm just only piquing your interest so that you can know when pretty soon we're going to make the announcement so you can be a part of that. It's going to be just so exciting. All right. Anybody got something that you want to say? Release here in the name of Yeshua. Okay, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody need a special prayer for anything that we have not covered? You're going to have to quickly, quickly, quickly raise your hand. And don't just wait around. Don't just wait around. If you needed something that we have not covered and you uh, need that, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Okay, praise the name of the Lord God. All right, okay, we don't see it. Okay, I see, uh, let me see. I believe I see it. I, I uh, felt I had a word for I am on uh, Monday. Are you here, I am? If you're here, you can unmute yourself. I realize that some people, they are here, but they are uh, working in other things. And so last time I asked, I think she had drifted or something. Uh, so if you're here, you can unmute yourself. I am I see Pastor Dorothy. Hand is up while I am is, is uh, she's here, but she's not here again. Hi, blessings to you all. Oh, oh okay, is that I am? Yes. Okay, praise God. How are you doing today? I'm well. How are you? I am excellent as always. You know, I, I just felt I was connecting with your energy on Monday night, and I uh, was kind of really just trying to discern what it was that I was feeling and sensing. Uh, and I want to just, uh, can I just speak to you in the word of the Lord? Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, God has some wonderful things in store for you, some things that he is uh, planning on doing for your life. Let me just pull this up here for a minute. Yeah, some things he's really wanting uh, to do for your life. And, and I can see that you're searching and really uh, wanting to know um, more of God and wanting to understand uh, his ways and stuff. Um, and but I want to say this, uh, this is what I'm feeling now, what kind of the Lord is bringing back what he was saying to me the other night and stuff. You know, uh, there are many paths. There are many roads that appear to lead to power and lead to revelation, lead to light, illumination and things like that. And but the path that God has called for you is the path of Yeshua. Does that make any sense? I need you to keep your mic open because I'm going to ask you some things I need. Does that make yes, any it sense? Does. Absolutely. Oh. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, uh, I'm trying to just be very, very uh, careful how I say things and stuff and, and what I'm sensing and feeling and stuff. Uh, okay. Because uh, I'll just say it this way. The enemy would seek to uh, pull your life in a different direction. Okay. And this direction, uh, what I heard the other night uh, was, if you play with fire, you will get burned. Amen. Okay. You understand? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, there are many ways, there are many things that are out there, and I'm seeing uh, people around you, people uh, involved with you and stuff uh, that are on various paths and uh, wanting to dabble into things that uh, can bring uh, harm, that can wow. bring confusion. And does that resonate at all? Yes. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. And I'm, I'm I, you know, I, I, I don't want to say too much, but you know what I'm talking about. And so I want to say to you that you need to close that door. 
I believe it's my mother-in-law. She's been doing black magic. He okay. broke up my marriage. And I think the door is to walk away from my husband. You think you mm -hmm. think the door is to walk away from your husband, you're saying? Yes, you're... because okay. with us being in communication, she continues to attack us with black magic. Okay. My kids I... and I, and okay. it's just so draining. Okay, stop. I see that. Yeah, that's that's what I'm seeing. And I didn't want to just, you know, go too far into that, but I saw some really dark stuff. And but the warning to you is because I'll just say it this way. Uh, when we're around things and seeing things happening and stuff like that, there can be a desire within us to maybe uh, explore and to see how this really works. And uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. And so the Lord wants you to just shut that off. That's okay. the that's the easiest way I can say it. Shut it off. Shut it off. I feel the Holy Ghost rising up. I hate to yell because I'm not yelling at people, but I'm, I'm speaking to something and I'm going to just kind of speak very forcefully here because I feel it coming up. In the name of Yeshua, I banged up every force, every spirit now. Go! 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 Every spirit of deception in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Go in the mighty name of Jesus. Go! 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 Every spirit of deception must go in the mighty name of Yeshua. Go in the name of Yeshua. And I free your mind. I free your mind. I free your mind. And I just uproot that desire. And I separate you from that in the mighty name of Yeshua. And everything that you may have been mesmerized by, bewitched by, I break off in the name of Yeshua. I break off in the name of Yeshua. I see candles. I blow out the candles <laughs> because these are not the right kind. And I close the door to every familiar in the mighty name of Yeshua. Because what I'm seeing is that uh, if you don't um, separate yourself from this, and I'll just, I have to be very honest mm -hmm. because God is trying to uh, save you. He's trying to save your mind. Uh, what I'm seeing is the plan of the enemy to really just take control over your mind and you just basically just out of your mind, just mind overwhelm and just not no longer just your mind is just gone, just gone. And so, um, you know, you uh, you're going to have to really just uh, pray there. And you say your husband is involved with this. Well, it's his mom. OK, um, but but she puts him under spells or whatever. So he gets um, possessed and it, I can see it through the eyes. His eyes get very black. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I've been with him for, I've known him for 19 years. We have three kids together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I've, I know what his eyes look like. Mm -hmm. So when this started six years ago, he, mm -hmm. he was just totally different, completely um, blank. You know, um, she was using him to get my clothing. Like, I'm not even making this up. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, uh, to get it. That's the only way she could retrieve it. So she'll put him under and he will retrieve my clothing from the house and give it to her, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then she activated my entire house. It became a alive. My entire house became alive, yeah. full of demonic spirits and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and it took so many years. And it's like, I'm at the tail end of this. Amen. I'm so frustrated because it's like, years and my kids like we love my husband obviously the kids love him too but it's like he wants him away mm -hmm. and it causes him to be a bit distant and obviously it's gonna mess with your minds and your um, thought processes and stuff and and it, it's actually creating um father um issues abandonment issues in your life now because my kids are starting to um have Okay. issues in school right okay so so are, are you guys together now we've been trying to work on it mm -hmm. for two years okay so we are but like mm -hmm. he doesn't let her know okay uh is he open to counsel um he doesn't believe in that but i think it's because he's easily manipulated by his mother so like if she tells him no it's a no 
Okay. Well, there's a there's uh, there's some other work that needs to be done there, and uh, that's with both of you. And uh, but for you, for your part, I can just deal with that now. If you can just um, just continue to separate yourself from anything of that realm, uh, the doors won't be open to affect you. But if somehow uh, you know you find yourself you know, being drawn to that and opening up uh, doors to that, these entities will come in. And I'm telling you, the ultimate goal, I see you out of your mind. I see you like your mind is just gone. That's what I'm seeing. That does not have to be your portion. Right. It's and, not uh, going to be my portion. Right. It's not going to be your portion. I agree with that. And so I see the uh, spiritual warfare. I see the uh, crumbling down of things because uh, it's God is, it, you know, everything it, it, I'll just say it this way. <laughs> I'm trying to choose my words, right? Okay. And so things are going to have to come to like a, almost like a rock bottom type of experience, right? A, uh, just at the bottom there and then mm -hmm. built up again. So there are some uh, things that's going to have to happen there uh, with the relationship uh, with you all and uh, with uh, him. And um, okay. Are, which are are you in uh, this country or are you in another country? Where are you? I am in this country and I currently live in Florida. What's that? I currently live in Florida. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay, okay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay. All right, just give me a minute here. Let me just, it's okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Praise your name. So is he involved with any type of uh, spirituality or Christ-related things like church or anything? Um, he, he believes in God, okay. but mm -hmm. he does not like attend to church or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm just asking questions because I'm kind of like Take looking and just trying to scan and uh, feel things and sense things because I feel he's a good person, has a good heart and stuff. And uh, but uh, the deception is so strong there. Yes. And I, that's what keeps coming up. Just deception that is uh, so strong there and that uh, God wants to just set you guys free from and uh, just, you know, separate that so that you can function and uh, just move in him. And uh, I, you probably believe in anointing with oil and salts and things like that, correct? Um, with the oil, yes. Yes, okay. You know, I would say to you that uh, after this day, what I want you to do is this, that if there's anything that you have, you know, in your home, on your purse or anything that could connect you to other things that could open up doors to get rid of them, okay, burn them or whatever, get rid of anything that you might think of or whatever, I don't know what. But anyway, just uh, do that. And after that, I want you to uh, just pray over some salt uh, in okay. the name of Jesus, Yeshua, and uh, just go around your house, just go throughout your, your, around your house, if you live in a house or an apartment or whatever, the threshold when you walk in there, uh, put some salt there, it doesn't have to be a whole lot, and if you are in a house and stuff, go all the way to your sidewalk and just, and then just go to your house, go in, in your house and just anoint it and dedicate it to God, and I want you to find the corners, if you can, of your house of the north, the south, east, and west, uh, parts of your house and just put a little bit of salt in those corners and stuff. And what uh, is going to happen is going to activate like just uh, a spirit, like a, a portal, and it's going to serve as a shield, as a protection. You know, I know this may sound strange, but that's what I'm seeing. And so uh, that's going to uh, serve there. And so, but you're going to have to be very clear in your mind uh, you know, that what you're going to want to do and what you're going to seek after, if you're going to seek after God with a full heart and everything, and, uh, you know, and it, it'll work, it'll work. But if some things happen to come up where uh, that would draw you to other things and you allow it, it's going to basically deactivate what is being done. And I can tell you that what I'm seeing is not good uh, which would be happening. So I want to strongly, strongly encourage you to just seek after God and um, 
you know, if, even if you need to fast, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. or pray a little bit to break some of those strongholds and some of those things that's there, and especially the spirit of deception and stuff. And then also for yourself to just to be as truthful as possible, you know, uh, in things, because uh, ish, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth in all things. And uh, he loves you all. He loves you. He loves your husband. He loves the mother that is uh, doing uh, that type of uh, uh, black magic or whatever. Is there a name for the type that she is using? I have is, no idea. I think it's just black. I'm not sure. Black. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, but it's, it's funny because like whenever she does it, God shows, she, he has her confess to me in my dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, crows, it's a telltale sign and I will have a bruise on my body that lasts over a couple of weeks. Then I know like mm -hmm. a spiritual attack. Right. Right. So those are my three signs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to be praying for her. What is her name? Can I just have that? Michelle Brody. Michelle. Okay. I'm going to just write that down and uh, put that on my altar. Okay. All right. Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, praise God. So, Father, I just thank you for this time uh, with uh, our sister, God, I am. And uh, what is your name, may I ask? Carlene. Carlene. Okay. Oh, Carlene, Carlene, Carlene. Okay. Yeah, I think you said. Okay. So I, I, I pray that you would just continue to uh, cover her in the name of Yeshua and her family, the children there, and just allow your peace in your presence. God, to move through that place and to clear out anything that is not of you. And we release the spirit of truth, the spirit of power in Jesus' name in that situation. In the name of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for okay. your time. Amen. You're welcome. Amen. You're welcome. Okay. And you know, uh, can I say to her uh, just something right yes. quick? Go ahead. Um, that to change your approach because I'm hearing that revenge is not the answer. So the way you've been approaching this is from a place of revenge, but I'm hearing that you should approach it from a place of you being free. Focus on you being free. And so we have. Um, uh, uh, about the DNA of the soul, the soul, about you uh, 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 restoring meaning to your life, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just focus around what it is that your mother-in-law is doing because he, uh, it, it, you, he that's in you is greater. God is greater yes. than that, but it's your approach that's uh, causing the blockage there. So your approach should not be revenge, focusing on how you can get even with her for breaking up the marriage or, or whatever, but on you being free. So it's about your soul, freeing your soul. Amen. And but I don't lift my hands towards her. I just like sometimes when the kids are being affected, I do feel a little bit of resentment within me. And I've been trying to work on that to like completely forgive her. Mm -hmm. which I don't think I'm right. I'm there right now, but it's, mm -hmm. like I said, it's been a long journey and I've uh, gotten yeah. better with accepting this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I feel like you're doing the work and I. Uh, it doesn't just have to be a, a physical attack when I'm talking about a revenge because God's looking at the heart. It's, what, right. it's what's in your heart. And so it's a, that's why I'm saying you're going to work on the soul, doing soul work. Uh, with that and detaching from all uh, from all of that and just work on your life on concentrate on being free and it, it's freedom is going to come as soon as you change that approach and you're working on it so you're mm -hmm. you're in the right place and you're um, headed in the mm -hmm. the right direction but I just I'm um, hearing it with your uh, with your husband is that He's seen that magic work. He's seen people die. And so that would, you know, God will work on that with him. But I just strongly say, I'm feeling strongly that the Lord is saying, 
change your approach. Revenge is not the answer. Freedom is the answer. So I commend you for being aware of that and working on it because that's a great start. You're yeah. in a good place. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll just be praying for you. Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. I had one oh. more person. Go I ahead. had a person when you found, I, and it's for Sarah. Sarah in India. Okay. Um, yeah. And so um, for Sarah, I was just writing something, that, but I feel like um, for Sarah, is she there? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is about uh, direction. And I don't say this often, but I feel like the Lord wants you to, <clears throat> to release a seed. And as you release a seed, I, I see two places. I think, see, one of them is into the rising missives. I don't know what the other is. But as you release that seed, uh, God's saying that a great, great clarity is going to come to you concerning some things and you will be able to retain more of what you get from these two uh, platforms. But you need to release a seed at the level in which you want uh, things to happen with you concerning uh, some things in your life. I don't want to say ministry because it's not so much about ministry at, at, as we see ministry in a religious way, but it is about uh, ministry. But as you release these seeds, it's going to instantly, things are going to flood your mind and flood your spirit and you're going to get, uh, God's going to direct your path. And, okay. and in, in an instant, and when you, when I say in an instant, oh, I'm getting ready to speak in tongues. It's uh -oh. in an instant, you're going to be in that place you desire. Okay, thank you, Jesus. I receive it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Amen. All righty. Anything else, uh, Prophetess Dorothy? Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Well, we thank God. What a powerful morning. You know, and I just, I just want to say that when spirit is moving, um, nothing is being done to uh, expose or to uh, embarrass in any way. We try to do it as delicately as possible. And so sometimes we talk to people off line or whatever, but I felt spirit moving in such a way and had to, ooh, ay, 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 I yet feel that we had to deal with some things there, hallelujah, but never to, uh, to uh, embarrass in any way or nothing like that, because we don't know, at least I don't know most of you here, <laughs> and I don't even see you because you have your things closed, but the Holy Ghost knows things, and so, and he speaks because he wants to uh, reveal some things, change some things in our lives, and we thank God for it, and we praise God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. All right, is there anything else before we go? Okay, I don't see any other hands. We will be meeting on uh, Monday, Monday evening. Come out for that. That's going to be powerful. That's going to be powerful. And so we're going to just flow in that. And you guys have an awesome weekend. And let me find you guys a song here so that you can have. And uh, again, because we want uh, uh, Billy to be happy, you know. <laughs> I like teasing him. <laughs> okay. And so uh, we bless you. Bless you. Let me just uh, find this little button here. to, And uh, everything that's been spoken in this place, we seal with the blood of Jesus Christ, and we command every utterance, prophetic utterance, that it must come to pass, it must manifest in our homes, in our lives, and in every way that uh, it has come forth in the mighty name of Yeshua. And we say that it's so, and it can't be otherwise. Amen.